Okay, so before I um, send this out, this is sold now to a customer, uh, I thought I'd quickly do a video of it because I've not done, I don't think I've done any videos of my TIE Fighters and I've sold two recently, so before they leave the premises and go to their new uh, owners, I'm going to have to just quickly do a little um, a video on these and um, make sure that you get a few of <laughs> the TIE Fighter collection, I suppose. Um, this is painted so differently to how I do them now. Um, this was actually my first ever studio scale model that I built. Um, I pre-shaded it. I used um, a custom mix of, I think, AK Interactive paints at the time to get the sort of the TIE Fighter blue. I highlighted areas and that sort of thing. I mean, it it's painted beautifully, <laughs> even if I'd say so myself, but it's it's in my own um, style, which I was into at the time, and that's a much more um, scale model, sort of uh, armour modelling sort of um, technique. There's highlighted areas at the top, the rivets have been highlighted, oops, all that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's slightly different looking to how I produce the models now. I go for the more ILM look. But I wanted that sort of more dynamic, um, oh, you know, look to it at the time. It's, um, well, I, and I didn't know how to do studio scale painting. I, I you know, I've, I've learned how to do that since. It, it was just something that I, um, you know, I hadn't achieved. I hadn't even tried to do. And it took the um, opportunity to to meet people like Guy Cohen and, meet him at Star Wars Celebration and him actually to explain to me that's not how ILM models were painted. If you want a ILM replica paint job, you need to do mist coats, there's no pre-shading, you don't do panel washes and that sort of thing. So it's quite interesting seeing this development of, of the style and how I've changed, um, but I still love this. I, it's a shame to see it go, um, but the, the person that's bought it is lovely and um, I hope they, uh, they enjoy it. I've got a little plaque made up and um, I've got a case that goes over the top of it so um, I hope the new customer likes it and I thought I'd just before it leaves the leaves the workshop I'll get a, a you know a little video of it and show it off so that's the studio scale tie bomber and it's the, the tie bomber was smaller than the rest because it was um it was made up of parts from the NPC Vader I mean that's that's the Vader tie wing and I even use the same wing so you have to do an accurate model of it nowadays I think Craig Lee discovered this that you need to actually buy two MPC Vader wings and just take two of the same wing and use it each side so uh, that's why it's that scale it's actually you know a lot smaller than the studio scale TIE Fighters and um, Interceptor and X1 and that sort of thing they're all about 1 24th this works out I know it doesn't matter any scale but if you want to start using you know measurements this works out at 148 i think but you know ilm didn't really do that with their scales they just built it to look right for the camera i mean i know the x-wings and um tie fighters and the slave one and that sort of thing are generally around 124th but the key was making it look right on screen not you know by sticking to a scale um yeah it's, it's interesting look at all these parts there's you know sat v rings on the back there's sat v NPC Vader wings, then you've got an armature, metal armature across the middle, and you've got um, Panther, um, the, the the fenders on there, the Mauser Carl bits on the front, um, and on the side of the wings, um, Hannah Meg parts inside there, I believe they are, um, Flak 38 um, parts at the front, it's a really, really lovely um, uh, model, and it's it was a great fun to build. Okay, so here we have the Studio Scale TIE Interceptor. Uh, this is a nice and models um, kit, resin kit, and it's beautiful. <laughs> it went together with a mm, bit of a, a bit of blue language. I couldn't the the, the TIE cop kit, the TIE cockpit ball uh, was slightly um, warped, so I had to heat that up and get that all right to get that to fit. But it, you know, it worked. Um, that's the problem with resin kits. You know, you do have to put a bit of um, blood sweat and tears in them to get them right but I'd much rather work with them than 3d printed kits and even better than both of them is original styrene but I can't always get the luxury of working with the original kits and build them from scratch so when you when a good 
you know, um, resin kit becomes available, I'll get it. So yeah, this is painted all with Archive X um, enamels, um, ILM Stormy Sea Grey, and this was given much more of an ILM look than the Thai bomber that you've just seen. The um, wings can be removed, and there's a magnet on these parts, and then the bolt unscrews to get the wings off. On the back, I don't know if you can see it from the forward, on the back you can see there's a hatch that simply just comes off with a magnet. It's got two strips of styrene that hold it together. You just pop a 9 volt battery in there and you've got your lights. So I'll pop that back on. So there you go, they've got your lights on and the front is lit up and also inside the cockpit. That's a bit tricky to see. Um, the lighting isn't brilliant in my room so apologies for, for that I can't really get a good light source on it but uh, yeah this was misted down with foundation um, on the top of the cockpit board especially but um, I'll add some pictures at the end to show the differences but um, yeah really happy with that one but I hope that goes um, well I hope the the new uh, purchaser the customer of this model enjoys it i certainly have liked it in the collection and it's a disappointment that it's going but needs must and sometimes you just you know you can't keep everything it just gets crazy you just can't keep everything you build you just don't have the room so some you know some builds have to be one in one out so that's the studio scale tie interceptor by nicer models painted with archive x paint okay so here we have the original tie fighter um again this is studio scale, um, but this is the original Icons uh, TIE Fighter, which doesn't have the detail um, and accuracy of the EFX TIE Fighter, but it's certainly lovely and it has got lineage because the cockpit ball was from an original TIE Fighter, I believe. And then they've put their detail on it again, not incredibly accurate, but I've repainted it um, and hopefully it looks better than how it came. Um, with, I think this was Hayes Grey, Tammy Hayes Grey, which is very close to the ILM um, blue grey that they used and then I went over it again when Guy released his Archive X paints with the Island Stormy Sea Grey. So this has had two repaints um, and this had the weathering on top again and I've added, I managed to pop the cockpit canopy off and get the ILM pilot in because the Icons um, model didn't originally come with that pilot so yeah, I've added that and and a new paint job. Um, I got rid of the base. I didn't like the base because it was just, you know, just you know, a mishmash of cockpit. No, of a sorry, of Death Star tiles, and it wasn't accurate. And they weren't. There was no lineage to them or anything. And it was just for me, it didn't match any of my other studio scale stuff. So I literally have it now just standing on this um, acrylic. Um, it's waiting. It's made of resin. It's it's tough as old boots you know it's it's not going to come apart and, but there is a area underneath for the pole to slide in if you do want it um, mounted but that's actually for sale at the moment so if you're interested in that one give us a message and we can talk about how much for that one but uh, that's the TIE Fighter okay so here we have my favorite of the lot Darth Vader's TIE Fighter the Studio Skull um, X1. This again is produced by Steve Neeson from Nicer Models and it, it's on a metal armature that runs through the middle. These have um, bolts in both wings to attach them to the armature that runs down the middle and out the back. So if you spin it around you can actually mount it vertically. There's the cap for the, for the back. Through there you can put your thread and get that mounted on the back then have that to secure it once it's in position when it's not mounted like that but again it's got the ILM little pilot in there the same one they used for the X-Wings and this has been painted with ILM Stormy Sea Grey enamels <coughs> it's a bit dusty <laughs> it's not actually that Jesus yeah that's that's very dusty but I don't know if you watched uh, my podcast with um, Chris and Jason from Rogue One um we love dust and we love dusty models because they look like the originals. So um, yeah, that, that needs a good going over with one of these. This is how I dust off my models. I just literally give them a blast. So 
That's a very dusty X1 Studio Scale type, uh, X1 from Steve Neeson. Okay, so here we have the original TIE Interceptor. No, fuck it. Okay, so here we have the Studio Scale uh, TIE Interceptor. And this is from Nice and Models. This was sprayed with all Archivex paint. It was enamel, I think. Um, I think it was enamel on the base cup. Yeah, it was all, this was all enamel, actually, I believe. Um, and uh, shit.